Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today what I wanted to go ahead and do is give you guys a little bit of a understanding and a tutorial hopefully so you guys can understand the devotion system um, in Grim Dawn a bit better. So to do that, the first thing I want to go ahead and do is actually log into one of my current characters and give you guys a little bit of an understanding of how to accumulate these devotion points. So, the first thing to note is that there are currently now a maximum of 55 points that you can acquire via devotions. Uh, each point is basically represents one. It doesn't matter if it's a point like right here or if it's a point like to uh, complete something. Every single point is a one for one ratio. Now, the, the way you acquire these is when you look at your world map, you're going to run into things that look like this. Now they won't have a check mark, they'll have an X over it uh, if you have not completed it like this. Now some of them are hidden and some of them are not hidden. Um, and in total, there's probably over like maybe 60 or 70 of them. So you don't have to complete each one of them uh, to, uh, I guess, to max out. So don't feel like you're forced to look at you know, every single corner left and right. Now if you do have the Crucible DLC, you can actually acquire all of them through the Crucible. Um, although it's recommended that if you were gonna do that method, just get like five or 10 of them. So when you first make your character, you'll basically enter Crucible and you'll get about five to 10 devotion points after like an hour or so, maybe not even, uh, because the way Crucible works is the more devotion points you currently have, the more difficult it is to acquire them via the Crucible. So that's why it's just good for basically like at the beginning. But anyway, though, now that we have an understanding of that, I want to go ahead and create a new character. Well, not a new character, but go on a character that doesn't have a devotion tree at all um, to basically show you guys the method that I use to kind of break down um, the devotion tree into a much simpler form. So step one is you need to figure out what type of character you want to play. That, so that should be the first thing before anything. You know, do you want to play a DPS character? Do you want to play a physical or caster DPS? Do you know what elements you want to play, etc. Once you have figured out what type of thing you want to go for, you can actually start filling in your notes. So let's say that I want to play, um, hmm, let's say two-handed, right? But I don't know what I want to do for two-handed. If we look over here by Kraken, we'll see that Kraken specifically requires uh, a two-handed melee or ranged weapon. So this would be a great thing to build around. So you tell yourself, I don't know exactly what I want to play yet, but I want to use a two-hander. You can't go wrong with going for something very general. So this, the affinity requirement is going to be five green and five blue, which would be Eldritch and Primordial. The cool thing about the devotion system is if you hover over the actual like types of them, it'll show you where they're all themed around um, so it makes it a lot easier for you to kind of see. And of course, it's not just one type, there's multiple types. So to get Kraken, we're gonna look at ourselves and go five green and five blue. So we're now gonna try to look for anything blue or green to synergize with it. Well, um, something defensive we can definitely grab would be like, say, Sailor's Guile. So I'll put one point in Crossroads here, and I can now activate Sailor's Guile, which would be five. So this would actually give me six points. Now the reason why I say Sailor's Guile is again, it's a very general, very, uh, very. I guess it works for everything. It gives you physique defensive ability. Uh, you get reduction to freeze and slow. Uh, another thing you get physical mitigation along with resistances and physique and movement speed. Can't ever go wrong with that. It's, it's very good for just general things. Now, since we have now completed Sailor's Guile, we get the affinity bonus for five which actually means that we can remove this point right now. Although I can't do it in this current menu, you could just completely get rid of this. You don't need it anymore. The devotion tree is very interesting like that because you can basically, what we like to call is snapshotting. Um, so since you completed this and gained your five, you have no use for the one here anymore. So we also need to find green. So I'm gonna use another example here with scorpion. Now, Scorpion is interesting because it would give offensive ability, which is accuracy and I believe crit and crit multi, poison damage, offensive ability. So this is more themed around poison, as you can tell. But the Scorpion Sting, which is basically what we would call as the proc, um, states the following. 
Uh, it has a 25% chance on attack to proc. It has a 100% chance, well, 1.5 second skill recharge, six, second, uh, six projectiles, 100% chance to pass through enemies, so it pierces. You can see the radius on it. It scales part, uh, partially off your main hand damage, and then it has its own set of poison damage over five seconds. It also reduces the target's defensive ability for five seconds. Now, this is a level one skill out of whether it goes to 15 or 20, I'm not really sure, but sometimes you would take a constellation just for the proc at the end because it may benefit you so much. Um, so in an example like this, if we were to pick up Scorpion right now, we now have the ability to attach this proc to one of our skills, any of them that you'd like. Well, not literally any of them, but you can see here, so these are my two class combinations. This character is an occultist and a shaman. So it is gonna show me everything that's eligible uh, to attach this to. So if you have a skill with a cooldown, say like Sigil of Consumption, for example, has a 2.9 second recharge after my cooldown reduction, you can see the proc chance goes from 25% to 29%. If we say, for example, select Doom Bolt, it goes from 29 to 100%. So this is something else that's kind of interesting because nobody wants to just spam a useless ability just to get, you know, an added benefit out of it. Sometimes we wanna, you know, add a little customization and variety and make full use of the skills that we get. So after doing this, we now have six and six, which actually unlocked Kraken for us. So Kraken, what Kraken, uh, let's see. Oh, here's another interesting thing about this. So Kraken requires five blue and five green, but it gives itself as a completion three blue. That means that if you were to fill out Kraken, this would go from six to eight. Actually, sorry, I'm retarded. It goes from six to nine. So with those nine points that I currently have right now, I could actually, let's see, I could potentially drop Sailor's Guile, and then I would be at four, and then I could drop this crossroads here, and I could fill in Turtle. Actually, let me pick a better example. Let's see, what gives blue? Does this give blue? This would give blue. I'm trying to find like a good hybrid as an example. Harp? Okay, so Harp gives two. Although I can't really get Harp. But the, basically, the, the simple means is that you can use other constellations as hybrids after you have, you know, like Sailor's Guile, and then remove Sailor's Guile after and make full use of your points. The Devotion system is all about respecking, and respecking is very, very cheap. It's not expensive at all. So I want to actually show you guys that now while I switch to another character, because this is a pure Crucible character, so it can't actually, like, do anything, since I haven't played on it in a year. So to respec, actually I can't respec there because she's gone, just kidding. Normally in Devil's Crossing, you could respec right here, but I think after you complete, I don't know if it's the main campaign or where it is exactly, uh, but she does go away and run somewhere else. But I know there's another respec character. You can see it looks like this, the spirit guide. Okay, so on my Devotion Tree, to respec, it currently takes 50 bits and one Aether Crystal. I've been playing this character over the span of, I don't know, four days, and after spending quite a few of my bits, I still have 1.6 million. Million. So you don't have to worry about fucking up here and there. It's okay if you mess up. It doesn't really cost much. And it'll tell you. So here, you can see cost 50 bits, 1 Aether Crystal. Here, again, 50 bits, 1 Aether Crystal. And I do believe that as you respec more and more, it will become more expensive. But I have already respec quite a bit and like nothing has even like mattered whatsoever. So you really do have the flexibility of playing around. Now, one other thing that I want to go ahead and show you is I'm going to pull up a website for you guys. Actually, I have two more things to show you guys. 
So I'm gonna show you this website called Grim Tools. Now I didn't make this, just as a disclaimer, but you can go to a build calculator on here, and this is one of the very popular websites. And if you guys are familiar with Path of Building from Path of Exile, this is essentially what it is, but for Grim Dawn. You, so what you can do is you can click your skill builder, you can design your character in here, you can even hit your devotion system. And here you can build your character from the ground up. The beauty about this system is that you can even go in the search bar and type what you want. So if I want a, a two, does that work if I type TWO? I don't know if it'll actually work for Kraken, for example. What I did for me is, because I'm playing a pet build, I typed in pet and I wanted to see, and this flags every single thing that would either have pet or PET in it. Okay, maybe I'm retarded and I don't know how to use this specifically. But you guys, you guys understand what I mean. Oh, actually, wait, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Here he goes, the red ones. Okay, yeah. So you can see this tags anything that's pet related. Another thing that I want to show you guys, I'm going to tell you right now that there are spoilers. So if you don't want this to get spoiled for you, then you can just end the video now, I guess. There is a... Uh, a post that this guy made called Nine, and he has a list of devotion shrine locations throughout the entire game. Now, I don't know if this counts the expansion or not, um, which adds the new area, but regardless, this, this shows you 59 total shrines. There's only 55 points right now. So if you just follow this, it'll show you everything. So I'm gonna click the spoiler now to show you what it looks like. And it'll tell you the location, the checklist. So what that means, is if I were to open up, if I press, is it J? H. If I press H and I go to my devotion shrines, I can go over here and see. So act one has a total of eight in normal difficulty. Now, they'll never be in new difficulties. So the way it works is going from normal elite to ultimate is, uh, you can see here there's eight in normal, five in elite, and three in ultimate, which means that it's just not all the locations show up in the other ones, but they're not in complete new ones. So the easy way to check this out is you can look here. Checklist, burial hill. Burial hill, done. That's completed. And it even tells you what you need uh, to activate this. If it is a desecrated shrine, it'll just spawn monsters immediately. And he'll even show you the locations of it. So this is like number one, the best tool to use to get all of this completed. So anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say for now. I hope that you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope that this helped you, you know, some of you guys out. I know this may be a lot of basic information for people, but sometimes this is the type of information that people need because they really do get overwhelmed because there are just so many aspects of Grim Dawn. And I'm going to see if I can tackle them one by one for you guys. But anyway, like I said, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow.